whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any prayer, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. Those things that you both learned, you learned them, I learned them. Those things which you received, you received them, I received them. Those things which you heard, you heard them, I heard them, and seen in me, do. And the God of peace with you. What a, what? What a blessing that the God of peace be with us. Paul understood the influence of one's thoughts on one's life. What a person allows to occupy his mind will sooner or later determine his speech and his action. Paul's exhortation to think on these things is followed by a second <laughs> exhortation to do these things. To think and to do. In other words, think before you do it. The focus of Paul's thoughts in this epistle is the Christ-centered life. That's where we come in. We are to live a Christ-centered life to be an example of those we want to lead to Christ. Paul has surrendered everything to Christ. He says, for me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. We have a win-win situation, folks. If we live in Christ, we gain. If we die in Christ, we gain. We have nothing to lose here. The message of our ministry is the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The model of our ministry is Christ. You can't find a better model. The motive for our ministry is a reward of heaven. If I ask anybody here who wants to go to heaven, all hands will go up even the answers. And the means of our ministry is the provision of Christ. Christ provides unity when we disagree with our fellow Christians and peace if we pray as we should and think as we ought to think. The peace of God will guard our hearts. And the God of peace will go with us. And that's the way Paul leaves it. He says, and the God of peace will be with you. The mindset of Christ has transforming power, serving power, and saving Changes are taking place in our lives when we make ourselves available to God. Changes are taking place in our lives when we cooperate with the will of God. Changes are taking place in our lives when we are patient. We must endure until the end. 
change is described in Romans 12 as living sacrifice. How do you live a sacrifice? That means that you have to do something every day. No longer do we just say it. We live it. It becomes like breathing. If you stop breathing, you die. Thank the God of heaven for filling your lungs with air. That breath comes from God. Living the life of a Christian is something to work at and to reach for. Paul says, not as though I have already attained, even were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I have apprehended that for brethren, I count up myself to have apprehended it. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching, some translation says, training forward to those things which are before. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Press means we're going to have to work at it. Press means we're going to have to put forth an effort. It's not just going to come that easy. We're going to have to do some work. Anything in this life that's worth having is worth doing the work to get it and sustain the work. Luke 9, 23, he said to them all, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, how often? Daily. And follow me. Transforming. Changing one's life. Changing one's life may be changing our scenery. Changing our habits. Changing our diet. Changing our friends. First Peter 4, 4, wherewith they think it strange. That you're not run with them the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Now our time is precious. For 60 seconds and every minute. 60 minutes and every hour and 24 hours and every day. It's precious. It's not even our time. It's God's time. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. So our life example, how we lead our life is important. How we dress is important. How we talk is important. Our world view is important. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, that you may put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, <coughs> transforming power. Change is necessary. And how you know what you need to change is you do an introspective look into your life and see what needs to be changed. This is what happens when we extend the invitation. When we extend God's invitation at the end of the service, at the end of the service, you have done an introspective look into your life and see if there's anything that needs to be changed so you can change it while you have time to change it. When the undertaker's roll us in before our families, it's too late to make any change. So while we have that life, while we have that breath, we are to be making necessary changes. Taking on the mindset of Christ we, we take on the ability to serve. Christ came offering an abundant life through his ministry. Philippians 2 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, but did not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. That means his whole life he was obedient, even to the death of the cross. Wherefore God had highly exalted him 
And finally, having the mind of Christ, I save it. Salvation entails three important aspects of the Christian's life. First Corinthians 5, 15, 1 through 4. Go over, brethren. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. Paul says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received. So I am preaching a gospel that I received. I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, not my imagination, not my thoughts, but according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We must die to sin. Our baptism validates that through Christ's death. We must bury anything that holds us back from God. We must find new ways to conduct our lives and live like the new man. We must raise our level of faith. Our walk will take us places we have never been before. And we will test our beliefs. So we must die. We must be there. We must be made. Salvation delivers us from the darkness. Psalm 119, 5. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, I will show you. I will light the path along life's uneven, sometimes dark and grim pathway. But you keep on walking, you keep on working, you keep on serving. Christ and the principles he died for serve as our means by which we live. John 1, 3 and 4, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In other words, if people are not in Christ, they're in darkness, they can't see their way. Christ lights the path so that we can see the obstacles that are in our way and go around them. In other words, we are not to let anything hold us back. Time, I don't have time. Isn't it funny how sometimes we'll be late for church on time to work? We'll miss church, but we have perfect attendance at work. First Thessalonians 5, 2, abstain from every appearance of evil. Christ's presence in our lives allows us to shine so that men can see that there is reality in serving the truth and in living God. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before Thank you. 
according to all that God commanded him to do. He did. Genesis chapter 5, and Noah did according to the all that the Lord commanded him. We have to follow authority. We have to follow the instruction. Our source book is the Bible. This is where we find the instruction. There is tragedy when one of less prudence fails to act. Genesis 7, 22 and 23, and I'm all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. All that was in the dry land died. Every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground. Both man and cattle, creeping things, and fowl of the heavens, they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him. Catastrophic if you don't obey the instructions. God saw favor in Noah and gave him a set of instructions. He said, Make it this way because when it starts raining, this will save you. This is for sure and certain. Just do as I instruct you to do. Luke 6 49, and he that heareth and do it not as like a man without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately fell and the ruin of that house was great. We must follow the instructions like the instructions are written. Not attitude, not taken away, just stick with the the source book. There is reward. Thank you. 